Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Just want to say thank you so much to all of last month's subscribers. Um, I truly appreciate every single one of you, uh, everybody who is watching the videos, who's uh, liking and uh, commenting and everything, just all that. I appreciate it very much. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Runagoo, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it is the uh, Runagoo 350 millimeter steering wheel that I picked up on Amazon for uh, about $70. It isn't necessarily going to be like a review so much as it is like a showcase. Um, I mean, I, I guess it's a little bit of both. Um, it's just there isn't really like any electronics on it or anything, so there's uh, not really a ton to review, but still think it's worth kind of investigating whether or not this is a purchase that you should make for your sim setup. What I'm gonna try and do is answer some questions that I've seen other people ask when uh, they're considering buying a new wheel. Uh, but if I do miss anything, feel free to drop a comment down below and I would be happy to uh, answer any questions that you still have about it. You can also follow me on all of my socials, which will be linked down below. So I'll start things off by saying that this wheel just looks really cool. It is a 350 millimeter aluminum deep dish steering wheel with a standard six bolt design. The wheel is wrapped in suede, or what I believe is a faux suede, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little while. And it includes a horn button, but we won't actually be using that because it's, you know, for the sim rig. Today you're gonna to be seeing me use this on a Thrustmaster T300 wheelbase uh, with a 3D printed wheel adapter, and I will leave a uh, link to the STL down in the description below. And as I said a little bit earlier, um, we're not gonna be using the horn, but um, I would actually put it in there if the uh, 3D printed wheel adapter would allow for it, but this one doesn't. So uh, if you happen to know of one that does, let me know down in the comments, I appreciate it. So with all that, let's head on over to the sim rig, get this thing attached and start driving. Setup going from the box to the wheelbase is pretty simple with the parts I have. In order to uh, use this with the 3D printed adapter, um, I did have to purchase a set of uh, nuts and bolts um, that were the right size, and I have a link to those down below. Um, other than that, the wheel just screws onto the base. As I said earlier, the wheel is aluminum, but it has this uh, unknown like black coating over it. I'm not really sure what that is, but um, it does scratch relatively easy. So while the aluminum itself like likely won't bend or break under normal use, you're probably gonna pick up a bunch of scratches if you bump into things or if you like wear a ring while you're driving and you know brush up against this aluminum. All right, so you can see I'm wearing gloves and this is for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is because whenever you're touching suede, you know, fake or not, you should uh, wear gloves so that the dirt and the oils from your hands don't get into the suede, which will, you know, make it look gross and really it's just to avoid the, the overall amount that you have to clean it because, especially with this wheel, we don't know if this is actually like real or fake suede and so you don't really want a chance wrecking it. In addition, like some of the uh, reviews on Amazon say the, the suede material tends to rub off a little bit on your hands and uh, due to the black dye can actually like turn your hands colors. And while I can't really confirm that the dye is gonna get on your hands, the uh, Amazon reviews on the issue seem to be uh, conflicting. So um, I can confirm that little bits of the material will rub off and I don't know if that will stop or if it's just because this wheel is still relatively new, but uh, just something to consider. Currently, it doesn't seem to be impacting the way that it looks or feels, but you know, long term, I don't necessarily know that this is gonna hold up very well and really only time will tell. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the driving experience and features or you know, lack thereof with this wheel. The biggest issue off the bat is that there are no buttons on this wheel besides the horn, of course, which makes sense, of course, because it's, it's meant for an actual car and uh, because it could go on like a drift car, a drag car, a street car, you know, the list goes on, uh, the manufacturer can save money by not including any buttons and leaving it to the consumer to figure that part out. Uh, depending on the type of sim racing you're doing, this could be an issue. So like I typically use this wheel for playing Dirt 4, as you can see right now. Um, and so this really isn't an issue for me, but if you're playing a more hardcore sim like iRacing, um, you know, it's definitely going to be weird not having the buttons at the at the ready like you would on a Thrustmaster wheel or, you know, any other wheel. 
Uh, force feedback is impacted a little bit with this wheel, um, as I would assume it is with all larger wheels, since you're kind of spreading that feedback across a larger area. Uh, so that means you'll want to bump up the force feedback in your settings or the game that you're playing um, if you find that that force feedback is necessary. That being said, um, this can also put greater wear and tear on your wheelbase, so I would suggest doing that at your own risk. The nice thing about the larger wheel is that it's comparable to your everyday driver or you know, race car, which arguably gives you a slightly more realistic feeling while driving. Um, but I will say that like, I measured it and this wheel sticks out two inches further than the RS GT wheel that came with my Thrustmaster setup, so this should definitely be a consideration when you purchase because um, you'll need to consider, uh, do you need to move pedals, um, move the wheel base, or even your seat? So can you move those items, or is it even worth it to move those items if, if you truly need to in order to fit this wheel? Um, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about this wheel, so let's go back to my desk and sum this all up. If you made it this far in the video and you are liking the content, please make sure to slap that subscribe button so you can see all the cool content that we have coming up. And maybe drop a like while you're down there. All in all, I think this wheel is great for a couple of reasons. It looks cool, it's relatively cheap, and it's kind of a fun change of pace from the wheel that comes with the Thrustmaster wheelbase. Plus, if you wanted to hang it up on your wall when you're not using it, it'd make for a great decoration. I think people who purchase this wheel shouldn't really expect too much from it, uh, since it's not really meant for sim racing, but it does make for a fun experience with some arguable benefits. And worst case, you have an item that looks cool next to your sim setup. That is it for this video, everybody. If you want to talk more about the wheel or any of my other videos, uh, I am streaming live twice a week over on Twitch, so feel free to uh, head on over there, drop a follow so you can see when I go live. Otherwise, I just wanna say thank you all so much for watching. Remember to hug your friends and family, and we'll see you in the next one.